Hello, first of all, thank you so much for the opportunity. Just the other day at a board meeting for the Center for Youth Organization, we talked about one of our success stories. A young man who battled with the streets, but began to turn his life around. He began to talk about his experiences to other youth and try to uplift them from their backgrounds. He began to encourage people to reach beyond what they know and see to things that are farther, bigger, and greater. Unfortunately, that conversation of success turned into one of loss because he was shot and killed in gang-related violence. One of the counselors at our board meeting then said, you can brush shoulders with someone every single day without ever truly touching them. This is something that has stayed with me and I've connected with and understood what he said. He was speaking about the connection that lies beyond our physical being and our image. He was talking about the soul. Yes, we may have different color eyes, different noses, hair, lips, and ears, and of course, different races. But what we all have in common is the human soul. And the only way to connect with another person is to extend beyond our physical being and image. When I was nine years old, my father was incarcerated. He was a wise man and someone who taught me to value knowledge and education. Unfortunately, he didn't have the same opportunities that I've been awarded. He has been my motivation to do what I do. I sought to find justice for individuals who are challenged by where they come from. I began working with a group called Rochester Teen Court, which is a nonprofit organization run by the Center for Youth. What this is is a second chance for youth who have had a um, negative contact with the criminal justice system. It was a remarkable program. And going into it, I thought that I was only going to be a prosecuting attorney and just be just for the law, nothing but the law. And I figured out that instead, I wanted to be a defense counsel. Mm -hmm. The reason that I had this change is because to the prosecuting attorney, the young girl who stole from a store, that was just a simple petty larceny case. The young boy who fought in school, disorderly conduct. But when you sit down and have conversations with those individuals, the girl who folks stole from the store was trying to feed her family while her parents were absent. The young boy who was fighting in school had just been called the N-word several times earlier in the day. You don't understand those connections until you sit down and you talk with someone and learn about what they're going through. Rochester Teen Court prizes that and understands that that's what happens with people who come into contact with the criminal justice system. It's not just the crime, it's about the person and what's going on in their lives. Students from all different races across the city come together and work with this program and are trained by judges, lawyers, and these are real cases, real teens, and real people that have real problems. Um, one of the things that I'm also being recognized for is um, my passion for speaking. Um, I currently have two award-winning speeches um, that, are, that have been nationally recognized. Um, the first one is called Yesterday I Cried, which is about the plight of the African-American male and how society has an impact upon that. The question asks, is the black man becoming extinct? And I answer that question with no, because he has a strength about him that allows him to hold on. However, stereotypes and statistics attempt to hold him back. Um, the other speech that I've written is called Overcoming the Black Struggle, which also talks about African Americans and the struggle that they've gone through. But in that speech, um, one of the verses that I said was that um, it is not about our race or our social economic status, it's about who we are. And we've heard that several times today, and I think that's something that we really have to listen to and understand, because that's what it's all about. It's all about who we are. Um, and I think that this room is filled, filled with such spirit and compassion um, involving race. And I'd just like to say to everyone, um, another one of my quotes from my speech, is that obstacles are merely stepping stones to help us reach our greatest. A lot of times people assume that race is an obstacle. Me being an African-American female and having an incarcerated father, being raised by a single mother, I'm not going to amount to much. But I think that those obstacles are the things that help us reach what we're meant to do. Those are the things that motivate us and teach us and push us forward. And that's why I do what I do. So thank you.